We are doing a receive test on our array. In about 20 minutes, satellite is gonna pass over our head. We are going to attempt a contact. Okay, we're less than a minute out now. It's a little bit behind us right now. Yeah, it's, it's moving quick. Should be a couple from there, I'm scanning up. All right, we are tracking. That's a good one, look at it go. Look at that, oh my God. Man's age-old dream of flight becomes a reality. One, zero, all engines running. My parents really are passionate about doing something within your lifespan that is good for the world, that brings some benefit to the world. For both of them, it was climate. So that's kind of just instilled in the DNA of our family is to do something big and impactful in your life. And so for me as a young person, the coolest thing that I could do was be on a TV show. <laughs> and it was a really amazing adventure and I think, you know, taught me so many things. Um, and I got to meet so many people around the world, which was amazing. But at a certain point in time, I felt like my impact was kind of being funneled through the activities of other people. You know, as, a, as an actress, sometimes you just feel like, like the spokesperson um, for, for other causes and other activities. And I wanted to feel more of a direct connection to the impact that I could have. So I visited the MIT Media Lab. It was a real awakening and inspiration for me to be there. And I wound up coming across space. I became passionate about how do you take domain that has largely been for science, that has largely been about exploration, and it's starting to flip into more of an industrialized sector and really starting to show so much potential for good for the world. And so I went to law school. In law school, I focused on space law. I worked at the FCC that regulates spacecraft and started to observe the trend that more and more activities and more varied activities were taking place in space these frontier missions where you're going to Mars, where you're going to other planets, where you're going out. But it flipped our viewpoint on space is actually about what it brings back to Earth. And um, that has been the underpinning driving force of Northwood ever since. So we help satellite companies send data to support global connectivity with space, which we believe is an important underpinning factor in being able to industrialize the space economy. The key demonstration point for what we're building is showing that we have a more efficient technology to communicate with satellites. That technology is phase ray antennas. So this current project is something that we spun up in the past four months, getting everything wired up and up and running. Now we've just been doing some additional testing on the receive and transmit functionality. Things are, things are moving. Why do you like RF in space so much? <laughs> we notice like there's things like launch, uh, an increase in satellite buses, uh, but really we think connectivity is not where it needs to be for the next generation of space. RF is just always hard to nail down like why it's working and when it's working. And we're using the same type of EM waves that also incorporate like vision, and you know you can go all the way up to infrared uh, but you can use them down here for communications like it's wild it's all the same waves you're just manipulating them in different ways i'm Shar. i'm a co-founder here and head of software really what i do is i like to say all the blue of the system so we are a vertically integrated company which means we build our own hardware and we operate it so that means all of the software that controls the phased array all the software that moves data around uh, hopefully eventually around the world, all the software that actually allows customers to book time on our antennas, that's all within my domain. But what really actually brought me to Northwood is everything that I've seen in the space industry to date. Satellites were launching at a scale that looked like this, and ground was sort of growing at a scale that looked like this, and I knew that something needed to change. From Bridget's regulatory backgrounds, she was seeing hundreds if not thousands of filings coming in every year. Griffin having done so much hardware and comm space research, he knew that there was a better solution and like my background being on the satellite side and ground side, I was like, yeah, I think we could definitely do something here together. For space companies, you're running a business that is completely reliant 
upon connectivity. Space has been accelerating very quickly thanks to SpaceX developing launch capabilities and that trend is really accelerating as you have further launch advancements. We have more productized satellite buses which makes it possible to just buy a satellite online in the same way you'd buy a pair of shoes. But connectivity with space is still stuck in a different era. So a lot of satellite companies accept outages and blackouts in a way that would be completely unacceptable in another industrialized sector. What we're doing is trying to reset those expectations for the space industry to say, no, if you want to industrialize space, the baseline should be that satellites are by default always online. When people think about antennas for space, they think about big parabolic dishes. The point of that is to concentrate energy into a single point and then to have that directed out to space. For phase dry antennas, if you actually have a surface that's made up of a bunch of antennas that then combine that power, the entire surface is, uh, is activated to both pick up signal and send that um, energy back to space. Northwood believes space is gonna skyrocket and go like that. And when you look at the systems today, they're, you know, they're impressive ground stations of the service companies, but built on parabolics, like when you wanna scale the system, you have to install a whole new aperture. And if you have missions like Transporter and Bandwagon and then eventually Starship, you're going to have hundreds, if not thousands of satellites overhead at the same time. And you're just going to try to track how many of them. It's going to be pretty tough. The best way to service the entire space industry is build a network that's actually scalable. What we really get the benefit of on the array side is that we can point between two parts of the sky uh, almost instantaneously. Uh, if you remember like the two slit experiment from high school physics where you have like light going through two slits and you see highs and lows. It's basically using that same concept, but uh, controlling it in a far more fine way. And it basically allows you to scan a beam without actually moving your antenna. World of phase rays today is broken into either more consumer technology that is designed for consumer usage. So you have much cheaper, really intentionally lower capability systems. And then you have much more high capability, really exquisite government systems that are aimed to do everything for every single different use case. And those cost over a billion dollars for 12 antennas. So the scale of the cost is kind of astronomical. So we build phase array technology that can service the largest number of spacecraft missions, which means that it's higher capability than those consumer devices, but it's not aiming for that super long tail of capabilities that you have in more of the government use cases. Phased arrays typically have a lot of different component parts for each of the individual units in the system, but our system does all of that work on the digital back end um, and splits out the signal there. So we uh, are actually able to have a much cheaper system because of that. The exciting thing is, as we scale our processing capabilities, we can continue to scale beams in a nonlinear manner. So we have this guy set up due north right now. It does not move, it stays in one place and it's able to track satellites across the sky. Right now what we're doing is integrating with another satellite company's system so we can actually uh, send the data that we receive to them and take the data that they send to us and send it up to their satellite. I think the fun part about RF when it comes to space is, is the distances and the challenges combined. You know, it's not simple to get the signal up and down from space. So the added challenge there is really fun. Yeah, so RF just uh, stands for radio frequency. Uh, so anything to do with like wireless communications, uh, your Wi-Fi, um, all that, your cell phone, etc. cetera. Uh, I find it challenging. A lot of people consider it to be black magic. Uh, so you never you can take it from black magic to reality and understand it. I think that is very loop. So we're coming up on a pass pretty soon and it's going to be scanning across the sky. And really what we need to do, if we were talking about how phase arrays work, uh, all of my software basically pre-predicts where the satellite's going to be, generates the actual phase delays that need to happen to actually point to the satellite. And we basically start loading it and sending it. When the satellite comes into view, we'll basically start streaming all of that phase data to the antenna and you'd actually start seeing RF information coming on this spec end right here. But we had a wide beam width. Yep. So we'll see what happens. It should be pretty loud. If yeah. it's point yeah. out, it's, I mean, cool. some Wait, both of them.
We are waiting for a satellite to come into view so we can receive the signal into our array. This is uh, one of the first times that we've done this. All right, Greg, you can press five. Hello. Okay. New pointing array coordinates. Yes. Yep. Sisera. Confirm that at 4.8 azimuth, yeah. 3 minus 0.2 elevation, 38.95, maybe because it's windy. Yes. Okay, we're less than a minute out now. 10 seconds. It's a little bit behind us right now. All right, so we're at positive, but we're not yet at our scannable range. Uh, in 10 degrees, we'll start tracking. Yeah. So it's yeah, coming from there and scanning up. All right, we are tracking. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that hump. You guys, look, look. Yeah. Yeah, nice, all right, we got it. That's a good one, look at it go. Wow. Look at that! Oh my god! That's great! Wow! Sweet! Yeah. Oh yeah! Bye bye satellite! Go man. Frankie, man! That was, man, that was even <laughs> that was even lower than last yeah. night, and I she mean, still killed it. Yeah. All right, well done, team! Woo. Yeah! Wow. Almost did cry the first time I we saw this thing actually really start doing yeah. what it's supposed to do. These, yeah. I definitely yelled as loud as I could. I mean. You guys have all put in so much work, so much effort to, to get here. It's been a lot of long days. Months um, and it actually worked. Yes, yeah. and it actually worked. Yeah, someone told yeah. me that they did this in four months, I wouldn't believe them. <laughs> <laughs> and you, I mean, you've been building these for yeah, yeah, 11 years. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. This thing right now is a victory beer. You guys, we just can't stop. It went from really small to really big, really fast. Yeah, that was really strong. Also, guys, you know what's something super, super sick? What? This satellite is no longer really being tracked. It's going to be considered like deorbited. Mm -hmm. Like this is like something you would do in a re-entry phase. Should I shake this? Like, hey. That level like of traffic. Early Leop. Yeah. Early Leop. So we did Leop. Yeah. yeah, we basically. We've officially Leop. I need somewhere to put this trash. No longer Oh, I think we do need the whiskey because we don't have enough beers. What? What's this? Is this IPA? It's an IPA, yeah. All right, I'm an IPA gal. Josh! Josh! You animal! I wasn't opening it yet. <laughs> Cheers, sir. Cheers! Hey. Northwood! To Frankie! Frankie. To Frankie. Hey. Pretty Northwood. Yes. What's going on today? Just packing up and going home today. The ray's all wrapped up. And uh on this job, we're gonna go back do some more testing on it. But uh everything seems to be working. We were out here since uh Tuesday night, a lot of us landed Tuesday night, and uh we we basically didn't sleep that night. We came straight flying from California, landed, came back came to site at like 9 a.m., worked through the night slept for a few hours and kept going so that was uh that was a struggle but powered through got everything working and uh ended up with a successful demo been here five nights now haven't gotten much sleep but uh worked through a lot of problems with the array learned a lot and got everything working very well for somebody that has never used a forklift before or tail handler. A uh, little spicy, but uh, we're getting there. This is our first go at bringing our tech out into the field, figuring out how it works in a new environment when you're just popping it on some grass and plugging it in. It's super exciting. And I think for all of us just realizing that in this chapter of Northwood is upon us, this chapter where we'll be out in the world, putting our technology out in the world, it works. It, it actually is like successfully contacting spacecraft, which is freaking insane. And yeah, now, now we just get to do it again. You know, the master plan is that space is able to just do so much more for humanity. And we're able to do that through having constant connectivity for, for satellites. I think the, the potential for taking care of our planet, for security around the world, for uh, prosperity across different areas of learning and, and health and industry is really enormous through space. So for us, we're dedicated to enabling that through this critical 
missing piece of infrastructure that will push the industry forward.